Hey, what's up everybody? David, uh, formerly the Pro Solo Flipper, now half of the Pro Duo Flippers. Uh, today I just wanted to put together a new video showing my spreadsheet. Um, it's been almost two, no, not almost two years, almost a year since I made the last one. I've since made some updates, including Poshmark um, and the changes for managed payments. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of make a, a new one here. Hopefully, with the, hopefully the video quality looks a little bit better. I didn't really change anything other than I hope that the lighting was better and that it was a little bit sharper. So we'll see how that this turns out. But um, and this video is probably going to end up being longer than I want it to be. So I'm just going to say this, kind of wrap this up quickly, I, or just show you now this spreadsheet, and then I'll kind of wrap it up afterwards. So uh, anyway, Pro Duo Flippers. Here is my spreadsheet that I use. It's available for purchase for nine dollars in the link in the description. Um, you can make you, or just watch this and get ideas for making your own. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, nine dollars is really cheap. Uh, it'll probably save you a lot of time, even if you want to just use mine to start with, or just use it as it is, or take mine, modify, take my ideas. I don't really care. So anyway, here's my spreadsheet. Okay, so here's the spreadsheet. Uh, if you look down here at the bottom, if you can follow my cursor, there's all these different tabs along the bottom here uh, for each different thing. Uh, I'm going to start with the eBay tab. So for me, I, I mostly do eBay. That's my main focus. And so that's this spreadsheet is kind of geared around that. But um, like I said, you can modify this spreadsheet however you want. If you do um, a certain platform more than the other, you can you know put more emphasis on that or you can add or take out uh, tabs. You know, if you don't do Amazon, you can take that out or you can change it to Mercari if that's something that you do. Um, anyway, I will go ahead and start and I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly so that this doesn't end up being a super long video. Um, you can always pause it if, uh, and take, take more time to look at it if you want to. Um, and you can ask me questions um, in the comments below uh, afterwards. And I'll try to get I'll, I'll try to get back to you on all those questions that you have. Um, and so anyway, we'll start here with the eBay page. So this is, like I said, this is my main thing. Uh, this is one of the changes that I have made uh, since I did this last video, uh, since I have started managed payments. If you're on eBay and you're familiar with that, um, at some point, if you're using it, this spreadsheet for this year, you'll want to designate a spot um, in this eBay tab for when you started your managed payments, and then your formulas will change in here. So... Um, let me just basically go over what this spreadsheet does and then or what this tab does and then I will kind of explain the manage, manage payments change. So here I just uh, and, I, and I should say for every tab there is this orange box here that kind of gives you a description of what this box is and how I use it. Um, just kind of a brief description. But for basically I will put in the date, the item that sold, uh, the amount it sold for including any shipping charge. I will just add that together here and then I will subtract out uh, I will manually enter also the shipping, the actual shipping cost here. Um, and then as far as these fees, eBay and PayPal, they, this is just a formula. Um, the eBay fee is based off before managed payments is just paid off 10% and the PayPal fee is the actual PayPal fee, which is 2.9% plus 30 cents for each transaction. So that's what that is. That, these are automatically figured for you after you enter in your sold amount. Um, and then your profit is also automatically figured um, just your sold minus your shipping fee and fees. And then if you happen to have a refund, um, you just go back to that same transaction, enter in the refunded amount, and then your eBay fee credit that you would get back. And then that will adjust your profit here. So, and then I just enter that every time I have a sale, just monitor it throughout the, you know, throughout the day or at the end of the day or... If you're a procrastinator, I guess you could do it every few days. Um, I really, I'm, I'm a procrastinator, but I actually really like looking at my numbers. So I usually go into the spreadsheet a couple times a day at least. And then at least when I'm doing my shipping, I will um, get it caught up. So um, like I say, like I said, a lot of you may have already started managed payments or will be soon. Um, you'll want to have different formulas in here. I already have them in here. So you'll just want to make sure that you switch over at the right time and change your formulas to the managed payment formulas once you start on that. So um, I started yesterday actually. And so on my spreadsheet, I made that change yesterday. So all my sales yesterday and today um, are on those new formulas. So uh, like I said beforehand, I was just using eBay as a 10% fee, flat fee, even though it varies for category, that's pretty much an average. 
um, and then PayPal was a 2.9% plus 0.3, or yeah, plus 30 cents. So now going forward, you, you're you no longer going to have a PayPal fee, so that's just deleted out. This will be zeros for the re remainder of the year after once you're on pay start to manage payments. And then also when you start the next year, if you're on manage payments, then you'll just have the same formula. Nothing. You, you could even just take out the PayPal column at that point if you wanted to, or just leave it zeros for the whole year. And then for the eBay, it, it will now be what I have, what I'm using is uh, most of, in fact, I just realized this is wrong. So this is, should be 12.35. So I just fixed it there. So now, so this is 12.35% of your sale plus 30 cents for every transaction. So that includes your final value fee as long as well as the portion that they are charging for managing your payments, which they basically have combined those to now. So um, so 12.35% plus 0.3 will cover you for most of your transactions, for most of your sales. Um, there are a couple of smaller categories that could be slightly different, but that's what I'm going to use as my average one. And then I will copy this down because I made that change. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And um, so that it's the correct thing. Um, and so I will say, by the time you're seeing this video, I will have this newer newer version of the spreadsheet that has the, the change with managed payments as well as uh, Poshmark added to it will be uploaded to to the website where you can download it if you're interested in buying it. Like I said, it, it's available for sale. There's a link in this description for $9. If further down the road you're watching this video and the link is no longer working because... I'm not really selling enough to justify paying for that website every month. Um, you could always contact me uh, on Instagram uh, through my direct messages there. Um, and I'm pro, du pro duo flippers there. Uh, I was pro solo flipper, but now my wife has joined me. So now I'm pro, du pro duo flippers. You can, you can direct message me there and I can get you, I can email you a copy of this or something. So, so that is eBay. Um, I also have one for Amazon. I don't do much on Amazon. Um, Amazon doesn't really have a set fee structure that I am aware of. I really don't know it. So I just have this set up to enter the date, enter the description, enter how much it's sold for, as well as your shipping credit that you get, and then subtract your actual shipping cost um, when you go to ship it, and as well as the fee that they took out. And that will calculate your profit. And same as the other one, you could enter any refund here. And your running totals are at the year at the bottom here for the year. Um, eBay, I do a lot more business, so I, I um, it has anyway it has the run, running running totals for the year there too. And then I've added Poshmark since we recently started doing Poshmark. Um, again, date. You can enter the description, enter the selling price, then enter. Uh, the shipping charge, which may be different if you're sending offers, this could be a lower price or even free shipping. So then you would want to put uh, maybe $4.99 there if you're doing that or zero for that. For that. Uh, but your shipping cost is always going to be the same. So that I'm just manually, manually entering that too, but I imagine that's going to change at some point. So I'm just going to manually enter that every time. And then your fee is a, is a formula. It's just pretty simple on Poshmark. It's 20% of whatever it sells for. Um, and so your profit here, same thing with your refunds. If you if you have any, I, I don't think we've had any refunds yet. I think that's a lot rarer on Poshmark versus eBay. So that's Poshmark. I have a local one here for if I sell something on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Very simple. Just enter the date, the item that's sold, and the amount you you got for it. No fees or shipping, obviously. So very simple tab here. Um, you can, and you have your running your running yearly total here at the bottom. But um, I'm going to go ahead and show you, like, so this box, like I said, this box kind of gives a description of what, of what you, how to use this tab or whatever. If you need to, you know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you this. If you need to add a tab, you can left click here, which will highlight the row, um, or you can highlight multiple rows at the, time, at the same time. If you hold down the left button and, and, and carry it down <clears throat> and highlight multiple rows, and then if you right click, you can hit insert and it will just insert that many rows, however many you have highlighted. So in case you're not sure how to en enter rows, and you can do the same thing to delete them. Left click and then right click and then just delete those rows. But anyway, so that's a quick tip there if you weren't aware how to do that. And then I'm going to go back here to the daily tracker. So this is something I, I do every day too. Um, so this just will show... Uh, the number of sales and the dollar amount of the sales for each day for each platform and then over here in the blue It will total it up for the days and then over here in the green um, It will total it up for the week each week 
and then at the bottom here it will total it up for the month so uh, it'll show the number of sold dollar sold for each platform here here um, but this is something I manually enter except for the totals here they they will they will calculate with the formula um, I'm, I haven't been paying attention to how this is looking on the camera so I'm hoping it's staying focused um, but yeah so I would just manually enter the amount that sold that day the total that sold the total dollar wise let's say and you can just do that here from if you just highlight the dollar amount for the for each for those days you can see that there was four that sold for $95 and then it'll also give you the count for and so if you go back over here you can see four for 95 so that's it's a, it doesn't take very much long time to do that um, and then you can see kind of you can kind of watch and say okay this is what I'm doing you know you can hold you can highlight the whole week and then see down here at the bottom um, how much you're averaging per day which would be 239 according to this these are just hypothetical numbers I have in here right now so that you guys can see uh, what it looks like with numbers you know of course you'll just want to clear those out uh, when you go to start doing your using the spreadsheet for yourself but and then the next tab I have is monthly totals so, so this is just carries them over your monthly totals uh, just so you can kind of see things on a monthly and yearly basis I have previous years numbers in here 2017 2018 and 2019 so that I can compare I really like just to, to watch the growth um, if you watch any of my monthly income videos or something you can see I have all of this stuff filled out all these months are filled out and then all of 2020 for as far as we are so it's really interesting to see be able to see how much you've done on a, a yearly basis um, and you know monthly basis and compare you know and see so you start seeing trends about okay this month is lower than other months or whatever so um, and then I have a year to date total I'm gonna come back to that because I'm gonna show you these other tabs that kind of show my expenses so this one is for inventory um, I don't track every single item I purchase the purchase cost of that what I do is I enter um, basically my purchases in here so if I go to three different thrift stores in a day I will enter the receipt totals from each one uh, on different on separate lines uh, I, I just so I'll just put the date thrift store and then put it under which one of the ones I common have you can change these to whatever you want them to be these titles for what this you can add more if you need to um, if I go to a garage sale I just put the total amount I spent for that day here uh, same thing with auctions or you know if I buy something on eBay to, to sell to resell or wherever Facebook marketplace etc so that's for inventory um, and then I have a little thing here that talks about how I, I figure my inventory at, the, at you know my cost of goods sold at the end of the year because this this is putting in everything not just my cost of goods sold because the cost of goods sold is really just the cost of the goods that you actually sold so um, obviously I buy a lot more stuff than as will actually sell during that year I will have you know a lot of leftover inventory unlisted and listed and so that's not actually your cost of goods sold so basically you have a beginning you estimate your beginning inventory dollar amount based on how much you paid for it and then you add to that everything that you purchased throughout the year and then you subtract from that your ending inventory uh, dollar amount that you have left inventory that's not sold and that gives you your cost of goods sold for the year uh, and if I haven't mentioned it before I'll mention it now and probably again that you should definitely uh, contact and have a discussion with a, a, your an accountant or a CPA to discuss how, how things should you know how you are comfortable with how are they, how comfortable they are with you know how to do things as far as tax purposes go I, I have my own CPA that I've used I've done my taxes on my own before um, but I prefer to just to use the CPA now um, and this spreadsheet makes it very easy for them I just bring them all the numbers that they need at the end of the year and they just plug them in and they really don't charge me very much and I think it's because I make it very easy for them so um, and then I have another tab here for supplies so this is basically going to be any kind of regular surprise supplies that you use up uh, throughout the year so shipping bags or boxes or packing tape um, shipping labels whatever it's basically you know your supplies that you need to operate on a day-to-day -day basis there's another tab here for expenses that is more for one-time purchases or bigger purchases or something like maybe you rented a truck to pick up some stuff from auction or maybe you went to like for example I've gone to an eBay conference before and so the cost of the ticket for that eBay conference the top cost of the hotels while I was there and the cost of food while I was there all that stuff is deductible so I would put that in here as my under as expenses and that could be deducted um, and then another tab here for eBay fees 
Uh, so like if you have a store subscription, you're going to pay that. Um, eBay fees are going to look a little bit different this year and, and, and for next year now that we're switching over to manage payments. Um, the monthly invoice will still be there, but it's probably going to be a lot smaller because your final value fees won't be on there anymore. So there will be a few things, I guess. But um, anyway, I put you know, the date that I paid it for each month and how much I paid for the invoices. And then I had another thing here for storage. Um, so if, if you have any other regular like monthly expenses, you could maybe put something here. Like maybe you have a car that you're, you've you bought just for the business and you have a payment that you make and that payment is fully deductible. I don't really know. I don't, I don't have a, a car that I use that way. I just, we just use our personal cars and deduct mileage, but we were using the storage unit. We no longer have that storage unit, but that was a fully deductible expense because it was just for the business. We didn't have any personal stuff in there. So I just put how much we are putting for each month there. Um, and then I have this mileage chart here. Um, so you could track your mileage using this if you want. Uh, I don't, I mean, it's there. Some people may prefer to do this. Uh, I use, I now use an app. Uh, so when I get in my car to drive for, per, for businesses, I just start tracking my miles. And when I'm done, I just stop tracking my miles. And then at the end of the year, I can print out a report. Uh, that's much easier to use in my opinion than, than this, putting in your mileage every day. But this is here if you, in case you want it. I no longer use it myself. But So that's all the tabs except for the year to date totals. I'll go back to that one. And this one is going to just kind of lump all your yearly stuff into one, one tab here. Um, this is not exactly going to be your income that you're going to use for... Uh, tax purposes what this this is more like your total cash flow so it's going to show everything coming in and everything going out and it pulls over from the other tabs so you have your your income here from each platform and a total up of all your income you have returns and refunds for each platform and totaled uh, your selling fees um, which is basically eBay Amazon Poshmark fees um, and then shipping fees uh, for each platform totaled, etc. And then inventory is just a running total for the year for expenses, storage, supplies, etc. And that's going to give you, and then it's going to figure out your total cash flow for the for the year by having all your income minus all the expenses. And then, like I said, you'll have to make it. This won't be exactly what you. This won't exactly be your income for the year because you'll have to make an adjustment for inventory as well as a business use of your home if you're using that. Um, and your mileage. So, anyway, that's my spreadsheet. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more, kind of wrap this up, um, but this is all I wanted to pretty much show you for the spreadsheet. So, that is it. All right, so that's it. Hopefully, um, hopefully that turned out okay and it was sharp and clear and that. Uh, you can hear me okay, I guess. I think that my sound should be better than the last one since I have a microphone now. Um, if you have any questions, please just ask in the comments. I'll, I'll respond to those. Um, I, I will just reiterate that please, you know, this. I'm not teaching you how to do your taxes for, for reselling. Um, consult with a, an accountant or a CPA. But this will give you an idea of how somebody who's full-time and doing it on a bigger scale um, tracks everything. Um, and... It makes it, I think the best thing about this, I mean, there's a couple of great things about it. One is that it just makes your taxes at the end of the year super easy because everything's done. You don't have to f total up all this stuff and figure all these things out. All your numbers will be there ready for you at the last day of the year. So uh, that's that was one thing that's great. The other thing is, um, even if you're not as numbers person, I mean, it's just great to be able to see, you know, be able to tell exactly how well you're doing, how much you're selling, compare it to, uh, the year, the month before, the week before, the year before, uh, to see the see the growth, you can track your average sale price. You can track, uh, you know, your number of listings that you have. Uh, it, it tracks all of that. So, uh, and just super useful to be able to to have that past data and say, is this is eBay just dying or is this month it's low because it's a normal month? Like it's June, so sales are going to be low. Oh, I see that they were low last year, so. Uh, you know, it's comforting to know that, oh, you're just in a normal trend right now. Um, you're not really doing anything wrong. It's just that time of year. So um, anyway, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, just you know, leave them below in the comments and I, and I will respond to them. Uh, the link is in the description. 
uh, nine dollars it's really cheap I mean it'll probably save you two or three hours of creating your own at least um, it does work on Apple numbers and Google Sheets so uh, I get that question also asked, asked, often asked and it so it is an Excel spreadsheet but it works with Google numbers Google Sheets and Apple numbers um, if if you're watching this video two or three months or six months down the road and the link is no longer working again feel free to contact me uh, on Instagram just send me a direct message and then I can I can have you pay me through PayPal and, or something and I will just or Venmo or something and I will just email it to you so uh, anyway like I said this the link should be live for the, for the new updated spreadsheet as soon as, as soon as you're seeing this video so uh, like comment share subscribe if you want Follow me on Instagram. Anyway, I hope you guys find this useful uh, for making your own or for buying it and using it on your own. Whatever you want to do. All right. Thanks, guys.